Hi, my name is Lauren Woods and I'm an assistant professor in the occupational therapy department here at UTHSC. My topic is supporting the mental health needs of our students. If you've ever been on an airplane, you know the first thing they tell you to do is put your mask on yourself before you put the mask on others. I feel like this is an important thing when we're teaching our students how to become more holistic practitioners in the future because they have to be able to take care of themselves before they're going to be able to take care of others. So when I think about that with my students now, I think about when I first started teaching, I was so worried about just getting everything that was in the curriculum or saying everything on the PowerPoint, I didn't think as much about addressing their mental health needs. After a couple years of experience, I've learned that that's actually a really important thing because I want to model for them the kind of practitioner that we want them to be when they get out in the field. When I was first a therapist, I wish these are things that I had known when I started out. I started off in inpatient rehab where I would wonder why it was so hard for people to want to get out of bed in the mornings. One of my main roles was to get patients up in the morning with the goal of getting them to go to the dining room to join other patients for rehab dining. I wondered why it was so hard when they had the physical ability to get up and get out of bed, was, were they not motivated to do so? I often took that on myself as, what am I doing wrong? What could I do differently? And then I think later on to when I worked home health and people think, oh, well, when I get home, everything's gonna get better. This stroke is gonna be better. Everything's gonna go back to normal. And when they get home, they realize, oh, that stroke didn't go away. It's still there. So here I was in my 20s going into people's homes in their environment where they think that everything is just going to be back to normal and then it's not. I think of one um, instance in particular where the, it really started to click with me, the things that I needed to be addressing more. It was a man who wanted to be able to shower again, and he had had a stroke, and um, part of his stroke was that he fell during it, so he had a major fear of falling again, and if you think about a shower, you're wet, you're vulnerable, and so there is that fear. So the first thing I had to do is convince him that I was big enough to actually help him get out of the bed because I was a lot smaller than him. So I had to learn how to build up his confidence and help him understand that I was going to be able to help him. A huge part of that was actually helping him realize that he could physically do a lot more than he realized he could. So first I had to address those feelings of anxiety and hopelessness and depression so that he would use the skills that he had to help get himself out of the bed. Then we were able to go into the shower and he was able to do it very safely on his own. We want holistic practitioners that can meet the mental health needs of the clients. So I want students to know that my classroom is a safe space, that I'm supportive of them, and that I'm here for them. So my way of doing that is going to be modeling for them how I address my mental health needs and how I want to address theirs as well. A concrete way to do that is something called a wellness toolbox. So I actually teach them how to think about the coping strategies that I they use for themselves and I talk to them about the ones that I use for myself and things that I've learned along the way to take care of myself because we don't want them to get compassion fatigue or burnout. So I try to relate it to their actual practice so that they understand why it's important to learn their own coping and how to take care of themselves. So we talk about positive coping and I actually have them write it down on paper so that they have got a, a copy of it for later on and I have them them think about what are the positive coping strategies that they do for themselves. So some examples could be exercise or journaling or um, taking their dog for a walk, taking a bubble bath. And then we also talk about negative coping because they're going to encounter clients out in the world that they need to teach positive coping, but they might also have to address those negative coping skills. So negative coping could be using alcohol or drugs or 
um, sleeping too much and not being able to get out of bed and how, yes, you need sleep, but you need a balance with that. My recommendation would be to explicitly do these strategies with students, have them create a wellness toolbox, or at least talk to them about coping and have them explore that when they're working on their schoolwork and trying to juggle all the things that they need to be able to do to be a student and do the other things in their life that they need to do. We have to put our air mask on before we can put other people's air mask on them. So my hope for you is that you would be able to carry these things over that we've talked about with your students so that we can have compassionate healthcare workers that can be holistic and meet the needs of clients while also staying positive and happy in their jobs long term. Thank you for listening today.